Good morning, South Bay Presbyterian Church. Welcome to our live stream service. Unfortunately, we cannot meet outdoors at this time, but thank God for technology and for allowing us to gather together here on YouTube via live stream. Thank you, Dan, for the wonderful music, for the prelude. Before we get started, we got a couple of announcements for this week. On Monday, we have the Women's Bible Study at 7.30 p.m. On Tuesday, we have the Walk Then Talk which can happen anytime that day. And we also have our prayer meetings at 7 and 7.30 p.m. On Wednesday, we have Pastor Chris's Bible study at 7 p.m. On Thursday, we have the coffee meetup at 10 a.m. and Hope at 7 p.m. Friday, we have our college games night at 6.30 p.m. and married couples group at 7.30 p.m. And stay tuned, we have a guest speaker coming on January 31st. So there will be a guest sermon that day, so prepare for that. This morning, our call to worship comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Hear the word of the Lord. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Lord Jesus, we just lift this time up to you. Help us to remember, Lord, that you are light. And as your servants, we are also light, Lord. We are children of the light. Shine your goodness upon us at this time, Lord. Bless us and help us to draw ever so closer to you during this service. In your precious name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning, and thank you for joining us in our live stream service. We thank you for this day, and we thank you that we can all gather and you know, sing praises and also listen to Pastor Chris's message. Um, our worship team today is Isabel and myself, Dan, and uh, we ask that you join and uh, sing these uh, songs with us so that we can prepare our hearts for uh, Pastor Chris's message. Our first song is uh, This Is Amazing Grace. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Whoa, Jesus. 
yes, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Whoa, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me the Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave, worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Whoa, Jesus, I sing for that you've done for me, for me, all that you've done for me. Our next song is Who You Say I Am. It's a fairly new song by Hillsong. And it's, um, it's really about uh, who we are with, uh, with Christ.
to close our opening set with O Come to the Altar. your way 
Thank you, worship team. I forgot to mention this earlier, but feel free to put any comments on the live stream comment section. So if you hear something good, you could put the clapping emoji. Or if you hear something that's profound, you could put AMEN in all caps with an exclamation mark, something like that. So feel free to chime in and get involved and be interactive. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 through 26. Hear the word of the Lord. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel the Aramean from Padan Aram and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old, when Rebecca gave birth to them. The word of the Lord, praise be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you in this time thankful for opportunities to slow down and to worship to rest in your presence. Lord, that is what the day of the Lord this Sunday is to be each week. I do pray that we come and bow down, that we receive, that we find rest, that we give our burdens to you, that we release our distress and our anxiety, that we Grab hold of your saving love, your empowering love, that we come to encounter your scripture so that we might be blessed by it and moved into new life because of it. So bless us in this time, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, um, we come to... This Sunday, and it's still the, the early part of 2021. And as I was thinking about today's sermon, I was thinking about how so often, as people come into the new year, they like to set goals. And probably one of the biggest goals that people set for their lives at the beginning of every year is to exercise more, to get into shape. And so oftentimes at the end of the previous year or at the beginning of this year, they'll buy some exercise equipment, thinking that they're going to get into shape. You know the best time to buy exercise equipment? The end of January. The reason why is because people have bought all this exercise equipment with these goals to exercise and get in shape, 
and then after two or three weeks, they realize that they're not going to use it, and they don't want to just have it go to waste, and so they try to get something back for their investment. See, people have great ideas. They have great goals. They, they have these desires that they want to accomplish, but so often they don't fulfill those goals. You know, this is true for us when it comes to our faith. So often we have faith, but we fail to put that faith into action. James tells us in the book of James 2.18, But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. All too often we have faith that does not show itself into action. I know that I have times like this where my faith, I feel is strong, but then I'm realizing that I'm not putting it into action. Do you have that struggle as well? So consequently, many Christians have this great faith, but they are ingrown. It's just about what they believe. It's just about themselves. Churches have this same problem too. We become ingrown. We care about our own faith, but we don't care about those beyond us. We have failed to put our faith into action. And so this morning, as we continue in our series, Heroes of the Faith, we're going to talk about a woman of faith, a woman of action, Rebecca. Now, before we get to that story, we need to, to understand that the story actually begins a little before that. In Genesis 23, when Abraham's wife, Sarah, passes away at age 127, 127 years old, that story of her passing away is linked to what follows, the death of one generation, moving on to the promise of a new generation. But that promise can only be fulfilled when Abraham and Sarah's son, Isaac, finds a wife. Ultimately, that wife will be Rebecca, and we will see that Rebecca is the second most prominent woman after Sarah of the matriarchal figures in the, in the story that we find in Genesis. She is very active in the events in her life. The beautifully constructed narrative that you'll find in Genesis chapters 24 to 27 describe how she becomes Isaac's wife, how she has Two sons, twin sons, Esau and Jacob, after a time of barrenness. And how she is able to find that place for Jacob, her younger son, to become the ancestor of all Israel in the continuation of the covenant promise that is started by Abraham, given to him by God, and carries on to Isaac and then to Jacob. Because of the centrality of Rebecca, in contrast to her husband Isaac, the ancestral sequence might be more accu accurately described as Abraham, Rebecca, Jacob. In fact, when Jacob went to Mesopotamia to get his wife, which became Rachel, he referred to himself as the son of Re uh, Rebecca, not the son of Abraham, uh, Isaac. Her her role in the story in this Genesis passage is so prominent as we see her to truly be a woman of faith in action. And so our first point is that Rebecca holds an important part in God's narrative story. And so this is important for us to understand as we talk about woman, uh, Rebecca being a woman of action, a woman of faith. See, the story goes that Isaac needs a wife, and so Abraham, who is his father, who would normally go and find him as wife, is older in age and not able to make this journey. And so he entrusts this important task to his servant, Eliezer, to go and find a wife for Isaac. Eliezer knows that this is a great responsibility given to him, and so he, he goes to the land of Haran, where Abraham had been born. And when he gets to the outskirts of the city, before he even gets to this endeavor in which he has been tasked with, he bows down, he kneels down, and he starts to pray to God. He starts to pray for God's guidance, for God's strength, for God's wisdom, for God's help. Genesis 24, 12 says, Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, 
Make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. Now let me stop there for a moment and, and just remind us of this important thing that Eliezer is doing, this example that he's setting for us. So often we know that we have a call of God on our life. We know it's an important task that he's given to us. But how often do we fail to pray, to ask God for guidance, to ask God for wisdom, to ask God for direction and help? And here Eliezer is bowing down and asking for God's help in this task, to open his eyes. We need to pray that we would open our eyes to what God has for us, to open our hearts to receive what God has for us, to, to open our, our willingness to, to share with those around us. We should be continually seeking after the direction of God. I know that when I take my eyes off of God, I forget that I have been given this call, this task by God, to live my life in a worthy manner. Our lives are not just for us. Our lives are given to us by God to make a difference in this world. It's not just trying to get through the day. It's not just about trying to go day to day. It's about really, truly serving the Lord, and as he called us. And we need to bow down in prayer to do this. Do you find yourself struggling to keep your eyes focused on Jesus, to let him guide you, direct you, lead you? Well, shortly after his prayer, Rebecca comes, and he meets Rebecca, and, and she gives him water, and she waters his camel. And then he asks if, if he can go to their house to talk to her family. Well, she's so, so excited by this that she, she runs ahead of him and she tells her family about this encounter. And so her brother Laban comes out to meet Eliezer and he invites the servant to the house. And the servant tells of this encounter. He tells of his task that he's been given. He tells how he was praying to the Lord. And before he even finished his prayer, Rebecca showed up and he sees this as a sign for God, from God that Rebecca is to be Isaac's wife. Well, we read in Genesis 24, 50, 51, Laban, her brother, and Bethuel, her father, answered, this is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebekah. Take her and go and let her become the wife of your master's son as the Lord has directed. This story is a wonderful story of drama and humor. And even though Rebecca lives in this time where it is a male-dominated society where the, the, the father, and in this case the brother, also give her away in marriage, we see that Rebecca is still an active part of this story. She goes to the well. She has this conversation with Eliezer. She waters the camels and gives him water. She runs back to tell her family about this. She, in essence, initiates this opportunity for her and Isaac to come together. We see that she truly is a woman of faith in action. Well, ultimately, Rebecca becomes Isaac's wife, but she is barren. She's unable to have children, and this weighs on them. And so we read that Isaac prays for her. Genesis 25, 21, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. Now, the scripture doesn't say this exactly, but I would imagine that Rebecca is praying during this time, too. I remember when Tammy and I were, were trying to have children, and we, we struggled to have children. And I remember how month after month would by, and it would just so wear on us. It would make us a little stressed and anxious. But I remember that it caused us to pray all the more and to give it over to God. You know, sometimes Praying is, is one of the best actions that we can do. And oftentimes, after we pray, we have to learn how to wait, right? We pray, and we wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So Rebecca gets pregnant. She has twin sons, Esau and Jacob, 
and we read how different they are. Genesis 25, 27 to 28. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man to open, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for a wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. See, Rebecca, being a woman of action, being a, a wonderful mother that she was, she, she saw how Isaac gave more love to Esau. And so she saw that there was an opportunity, a need there. And so she gave extra attention and she gave extra love to Jacob. You know, in our lives, it's important that we understand that every day God opens up opportunities for us in the workplace, in our neighborhood, in our families, and our friends, there's always opportunities that God gives to us. We need to make sure that we are aware of these opportunities. Maybe we see someone who is struggling that we can encourage, someone who has stumbled that we can strengthen, someone who is feeling weak that we can lift up, someone who is lonely that we can talk to, someone who is lost that we can give hope. Someone who needs Jesus, who we could share the gospel. These opportunities are around us. We need to be people of action, putting our faith into action, seeing these opportunities and responding as faithful servants of the Lord. Because Esau was born first, he was technically the one who was supposed to receive the blessing from his father. But when it came time to pass on the blessing, Rebekah remembered that it had been told, foretold that Jacob, the younger, would be the one, that the older would serve the younger. And so Rebekah worked with Jacob to get this blessing from Isaac. Now, unfortunately, she didn't do it in the best way. She and Jacob figured out a way that they could deceive Isaac to receive that blessing. See, instead, she should have gone to to Isaac. She should have talked about how Esau had despised his birthright, how he had given it away to Jacob, how he had, had lived in a way with, with bad marriages and some other things that he had did, done that was not worthy of receiving this blessing. Is there a possible that Isaac would have seen all of this and together they could have agreed that Jacob was the one to receive the blessing? But she didn't do this. And in this we see that Rebecca is flawed. And I love how week to week we see these heroes of the Bible and we see their flaws, which helps us to relate to them, right? You have flaws. I have flaws. And in our time of being flawed, we realize that God still works in and through our lives in the midst of our struggles, of our failures, of our flaws, of our sin, that God still can work within us. And we learn from Rebecca in this lesson that even though she's a woman of action, sometimes our actions, when we don't seek the Lord first, can lead us to do things not in line with how God would have us to act. We cannot think that the end justifies the means. We might think that putting our faith into action is about us forcing the issue. It really is about be willing to, to do what God calls us to do, what God leads us to do. We need to understand that if we walk in faith, in the way of the Lord, that God will work out his purpose in and through our lives. So we put our faith in God, and then we let God move our faith into the actions he has for us to do. Apostle Paul, speaking in Romans 9, 11 to 12, says, Yet before the twins, Esau and Jacob, were born, or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose and election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls. She, Rebecca, was told, the older will serve the younger. Minister John Piper, talking about these verses, says, The quote from Genesis 25, 23 simply makes clear that God decides the destiny of these two sons and the nations they represent before they were born. And to make it even clearer for us, Paul does not just say they were not yet born when God decided their destinies. He also says they had done nothing good or bad. And to remove the possible objection that he chose the older because the older deserves it, he chose the younger. Rebecca, being a woman of action, 
help to carry out the will of God and help Jacob to receive the blessing that he was to receive and to continue in this faithful promise of the covenant that God had set up starting with Abraham. And so our second point is that being a person of action is response to our faith in God. So we see that Rebecca is an important part of God's narrative story, and we see that Rebecca is a, a woman of faith in action. As I've been doing each week, I want to lift up two people from our church, highlight them as heroes of the faith. But I also, before I talk about them, I want to encourage you to know that I can't lift up everyone in this time. So I want to encourage you to think about who do you think of as a hero of the faith? And then email them or text them or, or give them a phone call. Tell them that you think of them as a hero of the faith. Encourage them in this way. Tell them why you think that they're a hero of the faith. Let us be encouraging to one another in this time. And so the two women that I want to lift up this morning are Mimi Wong and Carol Wu. So let's start with, uh, with Mimi. Mimi is a wonderful servant in our church. She serves our church in so many ways. She just got done serving four years as a deacon and serving as the secretary of the deacons. But even more than, than that, she has these wonderful gifts and organizational skills and creativity that helps her to bless our ministries in many ways. She is involved in so many things. So I'm just going to highlight three uh, events that she was a part of just in this last year that really shows her to be a woman of faith, a woman of action. The first one is uh, back in April when we were to have our Easter egg hunt. It had been about a month into the pandemic. Everything was shut down. And so we were able to get a list of families who wanted to participate in the Easter egg hunt. And so Mimi and Arthur delivered to these families these plastic Easter eggs. And then she had the, the parents hide them so the kids could still have an Easter egg hunt. And so Easter Sunday came and our time to come, came, to come together happened and we gathered together on Zoom and she had the kids go out and find the eggs. And then they brought them back and one by one they opened up the eggs and in each egg there was an object. And as they looked at the object, they talked about the object as it related to the Easter story and through this, Mimi was not only able to allow the kids to have this great time together, but to learn the Easter story and what Jesus means to them. Secondly, was just this last November when we did the shoebox ministry, or we might know it as the Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child. And we are actually gathering it together in our outside services, but we are still limited in our scope of being able to do ministry together. We are still needing to be distanced. And so uh, the deacons who oversaw it, especially Mary Kwok and Julie Sue, uh, along with Mimi coming there and, and giving her leadership and her, her creativity, right here in our NPR and in the back area, we we were able to fill 75 shoeboxes with toys and scarves and socks and, and send them off where Samaritan's Purse could take them to children in faraway villages and gave them the opportunity not just to share the love of Christ with these kids by receiving this wonderful box, but by sharing the gospel with them. The third event was just this last December, our gingerbread event. And uh, again, we were locked down. We weren't able to meet together. So we were able to get these gingerbread house kits to the families. And again, we gathered on Zoom. And as Mimi always does, before everything started, she read them the Christmas story because she wanted to make sure that the kids knew that this just wasn't about having fun. It wasn't just about building a gingerbread house. It was about learning who Jesus is, what Christmas is all about, and how Jesus makes a difference in our lives. Do you see a common practice going on here? Mimi is sharing the gospel time and time again, in whatever way, whatever means she can. 
What an example that is to us. Even in this time, in this pandemic, in this lockdown, we can find ways to share the gospel with those around us. And so Mimi truly is a hero of the faith as she puts her faith into action. Well, the second person that I want to highlight is Carol Wu. Carol Wu also is someone who's involved in, in many of our ministries. She's one of our deacons, and she uh, sings on the praise team. She provides food for my Bible studies when we we're actually meeting together. And she is in charge of the design committee, the decorating committee, which we just got to experience the beauty of the, the stage all decorated for Christmas and made it so much nicer for our live stream services. She's agreed to become the moderator of Deacons this next year, and I'm really looking forward to working with her as we carry out the MEDUs, the missions, evangelism, discipleship, outreach, and service that our church is seeking to do in 2021. Carol is such a great servant, and one of the beautiful things about her is the, the smile and the love that she brings to each event. I mean, if you've served with Carol, you know what I'm talking about. When you are with her, She's just there in a way that uplifts you and, and makes you feel loved and, and special as you work in ministry with her. She sets an example of joyfully serving the Lord. Both Mimi and Carol have this humble servant attitude, and I am so blessed in those opportunities when I get to serve in ministry with them. Our third point is that we become a hero of the faith when we, too, put our faith into action. Well, going back to Rebecca, the great Reformed theologian John Calvin says about Rebecca meeting Eliezer, he says, The sequel sufficiently demonstrates that his wish had not been foolishly conceived. For the quickness of the answer manifests extraordinary indulgences of God, who does not suffer the man to be long harassed with anxiety. Rebecca had indeed left her house before Eliezer began to pray. But it must be maintained that the Lord, at whose disposal are both the moments of time and the ways of man, had so ordered it on both sides as to give clear manifestation of his providence. While well, it is providential that Eliezer and Rebekah met and that Rebekah became Isaac's wife and she gave birth to two sons, it is important to note that Rebekah, being a woman of action, allowed her to be part of God's providential design for the fulfilling of his will and the bringing of his glory. See, that's what happens when we are people of action. We put ourselves in that place where we can be used in the midst of God's story, in his providential design. See, we live in a challenging world right now, don't we? With this pandemic, with the, the political unrest, with the economic uh, struggle, we cannot live our lives right now as we normally do. We cannot enjoy the world like we normally do. But what's so wonderful in the midst of our being overwhelmed and tired in this time, you're like me, you're, you're feeling, I mean, there's days when you feel overwhelmed. There's days I feel overwhelmed and tired. And if you're like me, you know that it can be almost too much sometimes to deal with. But as I, as I thought about this, it reminded me that I need to keep my eyes focused on Jesus and not on myself. I need to look to God's will and not my will. It's really a time for us to reset. It's a time for us to realize that we can step back. We can slow down. We can reassess what is important. And I think our story this morning reminds us that what God thinks is important is for us to not just have faith, but to put that faith into action. Maybe it's buying some groceries to someone who is not feeling comfortable going to the store. Maybe it's talking with your neighbor who's lonely and isolated. Maybe it's encouraging someone that you see is kind of down in this time. Maybe it's sharing the gospel with someone who has lost hope. But whatever it is, 
I know that God wants us to be a hero of the faith by putting our faith into action. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time to be in your presence, to hear your word, to be reminded of Rebecca as a, as a woman of faith, a woman who put her faith into action. Lord, may we be people who put our faith into action through prayer and then waiting on you, through reaching out and caring for others and sharing your love, through sharing the gospel, through putting ourselves in that place where we can be a part of your providential design. Help us to be heroes of the faith. Help us to put our faith into action. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for that great sermon. And thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Carol. Thank you to the countless others of this church who have served faithfully and have done so much, especially during this pandemic. We thank you and we love you and appreciate you. Let's all uh, bow our heads and enter into a time of congregational prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us breath in our lungs and this opportunity to gather together, although not in person. We thank you for the gift of technology and for Stan and the family for making it possible through the video, the audio, and Jeff as well for helping out with the audio in the back. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have poured onto us during this difficult time we are living in. We thank you for keeping us together, although we may be far apart. We thank you for this church and for all that you're doing through it, through the various ministries, for our plans of reopening again and meeting together and having a hybrid service that is both in person and online. We thank you for all those plans, Lord, and for all those moves we are making, Lord. Lord God, we confess that we have sinned, that we are all sinners that have fallen short of your glory. Lord, would you remind us of your good news, your gospel, Lord, that we are forgiven in Jesus Christ, who came to this earth, who lived a perfect life, and died an excruciating death so that we may be forgiven of all of our sins from past, present, and future. That not only did he defeat death on the cross, but he resurrected from the grave three days later. And that Holy Spirit is with us today. Those that call upon the name of the Lord, as it says in scripture, will be saved. So we repent to you, we turn to you, Lord, and we look to you to fulfill all of our needs. Lord, for we are a broken people, but Lord, you mend us together, you heal us, and we thank you for that. Lord, we remember Tony Steele, who is suffering from COVID complications. We just ask that your healing power would be manifested in and through her. Lord, that the doctors would take care of her, that your angels would watch over her and help her to recover in a speedy manner. Lord, so be with you with her. And we just ask that your spirit would be over those outside of the church that are suffering through this pandemic, not only physically, Lord, through COVID, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Lord, this world needs more of you. It's so obvious that this country, for example, has lost its touch with you, Lord. That the turmoil is solely because of our sin and because of our wickedness. But Jesus, we need you to be at the throne, Lord, and not ourselves, but you. Not a political leader not a person, not a movement, but Lord, you have to be at the throne in order for all things to work for the good, Lord Jesus. 
So we pray for healing over those that are suffering with COVID. That you would bring these vaccinations that are coming in, that they would be spread and dispersed at a speedy rate so that people may be vaccinated and have a higher chance of getting through this. And Lord, just deliver us from this situation, Lord. We've been waiting, Lord, for a miracle, and we truly believe that you are the God of miracles, the God who heals the blind, the leper, the demon-possessed, the dying, the dead. You raise the dead to life. Lord, let that power that rose you from the grave raise us, Lord Jesus. And we just pray, Lord, as we transition politically to a new leader. Lord, would you calm the tensions between left and right? Would you bring unity between both sides so that there wouldn't be any more fighting and chaos and quarreling? Lord, it's overwhelming when people can't even dialogue and get to hear each other's opinion. That's why you, Jesus, are the God that mediates that brings peace. Lord, help us as your church to bring peace to this very, very divided nation at this time. Help us to remind people that they must look to you, Lord, that you are the unifier. And as we have our new president coming in in a couple weeks, Lord, I pray that you'd bless him and anoint him so that he may lead this country well, and help it become united again. And Lord, just continue to watch over us, this country, this world. Lord, that we would continue to fulfill the medus, as Pastor Chris mentioned, of missions, evangelism, discipleship, outreach, and service. Help us to live lives that embody these this acronym, Lord, of MeDo's. Help us to live lives that glorify you each and every day so that men and women may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Help us, Lord, to always be from the kingdom of light, be children of light, and shine light in the darkness, Lord, that surrounds this world. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. We thank you for all the heroes of the faith, of the scriptures, Lord, that remind us that we can potentially be like these people, that we could potentially be like Rebecca, or Abraham, or Noah. Lord, you give us the power to do so through your Holy Spirit. So Lord, help us to continually live faithful lives, even though it is hard even though this pandemic may be taxing on us. Help us to live faithful lives that are centered on you, Lord, each and every day. And we ask for your spirit to be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Thank you, Christian. I would like to close with our last song, which is What a Beautiful Name. You were the word at the beginning
What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus He didn't want heaven without Sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus So as we go this week, we'll remember Rebecca. We'll remember her being a, a woman of faith, putting her faith into action. And hopefully we'll be challenged to be heroes of the faith, putting our faith into action. And now, may God the Father who created us, and may God the Son who redeemed us, and may God the Spirit who empowers and guides us, may that God of action be with us this day and every day. And all of God's people said, Amen. Go in God's peace.